Hey, Scotty, would you like to dive back into Ravnica with me? Ooh, that is much better. Okay, let's do that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews, the series where Scotty and I take the time to go through the pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are, and if they synergize with the given commander, the cast of the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck inside of the expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back, and relax as we dive into this review. I am your host, Vlad, and I'm here with Scotty. Scotty, thank you very much for that introduction. And today we're finally having our go at the latest Revenant Recon Commander deck for the Murders at Karlov Manor. This is a Demir deck and it seems quite interesting. The theme of the deck is surveil and resurrect creatures. So reanimate is gonna be very strong in here. I am very interested in seeing what kind of creatures you can bring up from the dead in this deck. I love reanimate decks. It's one of my favorite older <laughs> type of format of decks. And other than that, let's dive in. As usual, you can find a collector business sample and sign alongside the 100 card deck with only 12 new cards the deck box the 10 double city tokens the fall let's just play commander the life wheel the strategy insert and the reference cards so that's it let's rip into this as usual this is quite a beautiful box and it's such a shame to open it but we have to get to the contest and what does this one say this would be a great place for a secret message <laughs> it would sure as well but okay um so have you liked the latest expansion we are unboxing and this at the moment when uh, OTJ has just released, so therefore that we are a little bit behind. We've created our own car marketplace that is UK exclusive, so any and all cars that you see here will be also be able to bought and sold on our car marketplace. Very friendly shards like Kodo. You can leave a link in the description down below. But do remember that we don't actually sell any of our cards ourselves, it's just our users. Let's have a look. We have case solved here the tokens so you might want to keep some of these tokens and then you just have the usual plus one plus ones then you have the little strategy insert that also is you a little bit more about the deck proper and about the cards and yeah, about commander in general so let's see here do, 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 do. you have more of the codex here or whatever the cryptex whatever it might be called for the puzzle solution and we have revenant recon the deck and you can pause here should you wish it i like these little Little leaflets because they give you a little bit of information on how the deck was built and why it was built and a little bit of fluff and lore about the commander proper so there you go and there you have it now let's have a look at the contents here here's the deck box that you can build up to create and store your deck proper and then you have the little life wheel this time around the life wheels did not get an illustration and you get the deck sample which we will dive into right away so yeah as I've seen the collector boosters, we've already reviewed them. They're not as fun as we thought because in the end, most of the versions that you can get are not that great in there. Oh, Kaya's Justice Spirit. This is a legendary planeswalker that we've not seen before. Quite a beautiful, beautiful borderless illustration here. So that's very nice, lucky hit. But yeah, the collector boosters has basically more or less more of the same cards that you'll get and the play booster with a very small chance of getting anything, getting anything that is quite interesting. So therefore, unlike other collector boosters, this was one that was a bit underwhelming for us. Not because we didn't get lucky, but mostly because if you're spending that premium, you want to get more of the good value of the cards. And realistically, the magnifying glass and the dosier cards are just not where the value is because there's so much. Of and the extended art cards as well. So anyway, whew, this the plastic is electrostatic. There you go. So let's have a look at our commander. Oh, by the way, if you're new here, first off, welcome. And then secondly, what we do in this um, kind of videos is we look at the deck and how it evolves all around the commander proper. We don't look at synergies with the general, but just the main commander, how well laid out compared to the commander, the rest of it. So that's what we do. Um, so Mirko, the obsessive theorist. This is a 1-3 vampire.
Legendary Detective that costs three with Demir and the cost. It's a legendary creature, of course, with flying vigilance. Whenever you surveil, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then at the beginning of your end step, you may return target creature card with power less than Miracles from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter, meaning that if it dies again, it gets exiled. This is very good because well, first off, it's not one per turn, as many commanders tend to have been limited legally, even in the Lost Cameras of Excellent. Whenever they have an ability that puts a plus one, plus one counter or does something, it tends to be once per turn. We saw that also in the Doctor Who decks. This one doesn't, so that's really, really strong. And on top of that, just reanimating once every time it attacks. Um, yeah, that's uh, really, really good. Oh, actually, it's not even when it attacks, at the beginning of your end step. So even after battle and stuff like that so long as you keep this guy alive you're gonna be having fun so this looks like a strong little card and a strong little deck presumably now well, we'll see how it actually works out if it does what it's supposed to do then the hit and miss usually about reanimator decks that are pre-made is the fact that and i'll talk about it while we go through the tokens is the fact that most of the creature cards or are, are so towards the end of the game that you'll find oh is your mini faces token creature zombie shapeshifter cleric you may have it become enter the battlefield as a copy of the creature on the battlefield it have except it has no mana cost light and it has a zombie type in addition to other types that's interesting so yeah it's you're spending a lot of in the initial turn setting up and if you are playing against other decks that are quicker on the board you're not gonna have as fun unless it, they tend to be control heavy but the, realistically the pre-cons have you noticed how many zombies there are in here that is a lot of zombies okay so let's go on let's have a look at the general proper as well to see how long and how much does it synergize we have marvel deep operative giddy it's a 1-8 octopus rogue that costs five and whenever it attacks clash with the defending player each clashing player reveals a top card of the library, then puts that card top or bottom. A player wins if their card had a higher mana value. And whenever you win a clash, draw a card, then you may cast a spell from your hand with mana value eight or less without paying its mana cost. So again, the theme of reanimator is you're gonna have huge spells, therefore you're likely gonna be winning the clash, right? So you are not forced to put it at the bottom necessarily. You can put it bottom or top in case you don't need the card. And then if you win the clash, you get to, well, play a spell, cast a spell from your hand, mana value eight or less without paying the mana cost. That's really, really strong. Does synergize with one part of the reanimate, which is, well, you have dead spells in hand if you can't reanimate them and you don't have mana to play them. So, yep, synergistic in a way. So that's fairly nice. And then you get the helper card and we'll start right off with the case of of shifting visage and it's a three cost case it's an enchantment of course and at the beginning of your upkeep you get to surveil one and to solve three there are 15 or more cards in your graveyard and once you solve whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell copy that spell so okay that's not bad whenever you cast a big spell you can copy it it might be really easy to do this you know because in the end you are going to want to surveil a lot despite the fact that your commander doesn't allow you to surveil remember it's whenever you surveil it doesn't let you surveil necessarily but yeah uh it shouldn't be too hard to get to this part so long as you're not collecting evidence and other than that yeah <laughs> that's really really good the solve part we'll see how it goes it could be it could also not be a great card then we got coffee catchers okay so this is a two one Creature fairy that costs two has flying, and whenever you surveil, you may pay two if you do create a token that's a copy of copy catcher. Okay, uh, not as synergistic to the reanimate part of what I care about, not even to the counters part, and it doesn't even enable surveil, it's just a surveil adjacent card, so not necessarily a bad card, but maybe perhaps not what the commander wants. Final word phantom, it's a one four flasher. It, oh. It costs three, it has flying, and during each opponent's end step, you may cast spells as though they had flash. So that's not bad. Any spell, so you can even cast creature spells. And again, 
it could synergize with the bigger spells that you have in play, but necessarily it's not, it's kind of meh, we'll see. It depends on how the rest of the deck is built. Next up, we have Watcher of Hours. This is a 6-6 six, six Sphinx that costs six. Flying Word three, and whenever you remove a time counter from it, while it's exiled, you surveil one. So finally one of these surveilling able, and you can suspend it for two for six turns. So suspend it for six turns, and every turn you get to surveil until it comes into play. It's an annoying way to have it, and I don't mind it, but it's not part of the reanimate theme. It is a surveil enabler, kind of, but there are better. Um, it's a 6-6 six, six flying ward 3. It's a really good card, but again, that, there are better ways to enable so surveil, and something like this, it's, yeah, you can reanimate it. Why not? I guess, yeah, let's, let's say yes, but if you got better, remove it. And then we have Eternal Serenade. We saw before. Cost six. It's a sorcery. It's black. Surveil three. Then return a creature card from graveyard to the battlefield with finality counter. And then exile Eternal Serenade with three time counters on it. And then you can suspend it for three turns by paying three. So basically, you get to replay this. This is quite, 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 quite good. I really, really like it. It's a constant reanimate in and of itself. And um, yeah, so long as uh, the, they don't counter the spell, you should be able to, uh, so long as it resolves, you'll be able to constantly reanimate, which is insanely good. Eye of Dusk Mantle, it's a 3A creature eye, okay. <laughs> That is a, is a bit weird. Seven, it has flying and lifelink. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards in your graveyard. You surveil this turn. Okay, and if you cast a spell this way, you may pay life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. So this is a bolus of citadel on a creature and so long and it's surveil. Um, it's interesting. That is an interesting way to spin it. I will say yes, it's part of reanimate, but is it worth it? I don't know. There are better reanimate cards. I don't think that they're gonna put all of them in this deck because some of them are really expensive, but that's an interesting way of going about it, but it might be a little bit too, in, too expensive. It just depends on how quickly you could get to cast this because yeah, or reanimate it, you know? If you can reanimate it without problems, then yeah, it gives you an extra avenue of reanimation. So that's good. It's a 5-7 vehicle, the foreboding steamboat. <laughs> Uh, they made a steamboat that's that's even a, uh, a card okay uh when it enters the battlefield each player chooses two non-token gnome vehicle creatures they control exile them until this leaves the battlefield and then when it attacks put a creature card exile with it on into its owner's graveyard if you do investigate crew two not that great i think they're going through like you know uh what was it um death on the nile and stuff like that and that's why they're putting the steamboat which is a cute reference to a uh, murder mystery kind of things but it's not necessarily that strong nor synergistic um it's really easily removed so i'd rather just get something better and shigable tales a three two zombie detective it costs three it's black when it's his battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep you get to surveil one and whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyard front library you get to investigate okay and then you search for two sack a clue and return this from graveyard to your hand so this is a surveil enabler and it's not a bad one so it is synergistic and it, you do that at least once per turn so long as it's so that's good i'll keep it in because it does synergize if you get better surveil uh, enablers maybe swap it but it's not a bad one because it also gives you clues and you can reanimate it via the clue so it's a good card counterpoint it costs five that's an instant counter attack spell you may cast creature instant sorcery or planeswalker spell from graveyard with mana value less than or equal to the spell's mana value without paying its mana cost a way to reanimate it's an instant this first instant that we saw it's not bad it's a counter spell instant that allows you kind of mana drain in a way and cast so not bad i would keep it ransom note we saw this one before not bad it gives you a couple of things to do but the fact that this does not have um what should i say uh, interaction with surveil uh other than just the fact that when it enters valve you get to surveil one uh, meh you know um i liked it in the blame game deck because it allowed you to go this one draws your card for two it's just a clue so meh i don't think mutiny here is a 3-3 three, three salamander pirate and it costs force blue when it enters the battlefield exile up to one target non-salamander creature that 
creature's controller creates a 4-3 blue summoner creature token and you can encore it. Um, no, there are better removals, especially in these colors. Uh, thank you, no, very much. It's just like the foreboding steamboat, there are better cards. And again, where is the reanimate part and survey part? Dream Eater is a 4-3 Nightmare Sphinx that costs 6. Flash, flying, when it enters the battlefield, you get to surveil 4. There you go. And when you do, you may return target null and permanent opponent controls to its owner's hand. It's a bit expensive for what it's trying to do. It's a bounce, a permanent bounce, and a surveil 4. And and yeah, again, meh, it's, I see what you're trying to do. If you have better, I would use others. Um, this is a problem in general with recon reanimate decks. They tend to try and do too much and they're not as focused. And even the, the, the cards that they use for creatures and so on and so forth and are not as impactful to the board as you think. A bounce here that costs you six, even if you reanimate it and get a surveil four, it's just a four three. It's it's really easily killable and there are much better cards that you can reanimate at this cost that don't really cost that much uh, money wise anyway we have mission briefing that's an instant it costs two blue surveil two and choose an instant sorcery card in your graveyard you may cast it this turn if the spell will be put in the graveyard exile instead this i like more very nice oh the phyrexian metamorph that's nice it's a zero zero phyrexian shapeshifter costs four and uh, of course it's a phyrexian blue and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield except it's an artifact in addition to its other types this is actually really good i like this card it's quite strong it's very strong in artifact decks not this kind of deck but it can be really strong if somebody plays a bomb and you just keep it on the side i like it but i don't really see the synergy in this deck other than well you're just gonna copy a creature and you know there are a lot of cards that do that so i'm gonna put it in the not synergistic pile sphinx of the second sun is a six six flying that costs uh, whooping eight and at the beginning of your post combat main phase there is an additional beginning phase after this phase so now we're starting to get into the more okay type of reanimate targets yep that's fine i'd rather keep this one than the dream eater despite the fact that it doesn't really synergize with the surveil part it does give you an other beginning phase so which includes on top upkeep and draw steps so that's quite strong then we have the vizier of many faces it costs four it's a shapeshifter cleric it's a zero zero and you uh, may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield we saw this token earlier so it just becomes another copy and you can embalm it this card is in the graveyard you pay the embalm cost you exile the card from graveyard and you create a copy of it that comes into play so this has more synergy than the phyrexian metamorph i do like seeing the metamorph i'm not gonna lie but yeah it's a good good card value wise no black sun zenith another great card value wise it's a wipe it's a sorcery it costs x and two blacks and you put x minus one minus one counters on each Creature, and then you shuffle it back into the owner's graveyard. I love this card. I play it myself in my Yama deck, and it's a great, great way to just wipe the board. So, yes, absolutely keep it. Ooh, Dog Detective is a 2 1 human rogue that costs two. Look at those glasses. That's pretty cool. When it enters the battlefield, you get to surveil two, and whenever an opponent draws the second card each turn, you may return it from graveyard to your hand. A surveil enabler, a weaker one, but you can reanimate it in a way i mean you can at least return to your hand and it's quite easy to have a person draw their second card each turn so that's not too bad oh doom whisper i haven't seen you in a while it's a six six that costs five flying trample pay to life surveil too so this this is a very very good reanimate target and surveiller and i really love it absolutely now we're getting to some of the goodies then we have the grave titan which is a great great way <laughs> a great reanimate target it's a six six that costs six is death touch enters the battlefield or attacks you create two 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 black zombie creature tokens absolutely love it massacre worm another great one now we're getting to the value of the deck very very good massacre worm six five that costs six when it's is battlefield creatures your opponent control get minus two minus two until the end of turn whenever an opponent control uh a creature on opponent controls dies that player lose life so now we're getting to the reanimate targets and why not do this which is something that i think i should have done before and that i had done here um 
I'm not gonna put this, I mean, it's a reanimate target, but I'm, it's not really a good one, but okay, I'll keep it here. This is Silveril Enabler, and these are um, synergistic cards, and these are non city cards. So we'll do that um, just to keep track of what the deck is trying to. So far, let's recap real easily. We have some Surveil Enablers, some Copy Enablers, um, one reanimate kind of card okay oh this is also a, a thing so just one reanimate type of card uh here we have copy but that's that's about it we have quite a few targets here but realistically uh yeah uh, also the eye of dust mantle is a reanimate target because it's so expensive but at the same time it synergizes with the reanimate parts so i'd rather keep it there and then we will see here we have channel serenade so that's two ish plus miracle that's three cards that we can have reanimate. Um, so that's three, uh, I guess counterpoint you can see you as another one, that's four. So we'll see how good reanimate is. Then we get Overseer of the Nam, it's a five, five flying that costs seven creature and it's a demon. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target creature and whenever I don't target creature, I don't put on opponent controls dies, create a tap and zombie token. I like this as a target more than the Watcher of ours myself. Um, even though the Watcher does enable surveil a little bit, it's, uh, and also, you know, you see it coming. It's an easier cast, uh, at least. Ooh, Phyrexian Arena. That's a very, very good tool set. And I'm happy to see it come into play here. Pylon, okay, this is a, an interesting card. It is an instant that costs four. You can convoke it and destroy target creature or player. Planeswalker and Surveil too. That's why they put it in. It's for the Surveil too. So it's a spot removal that surveils. Reanimate, nice. Now that's that's really, really good. Put target creature card from graveyard onto the battlefield and your control use life equals to its mana value. Very, very good. Wow, Rise of the Dark Realms. Mamma mia, the, the value in this deck is insane. They put so so many good cards, so many good cards. Okay, so here we have uh, seven plus two black pips. So that's a nine sorcery. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Absolutely insane card. Ooh, and the Toxic Deluge, the value just keeps on going. Holy moly. As an additional cost, it has a spell, you pay X life, and yeah, you give minus X, minus X to all creatures. Very, 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 very good. So you have really good removal, some of the best re, um, reanimates so far. There are, of course, more, and we'll see how many, but so far it's not bad. Then we have Twilight Prophet. It's a 2-4 that costs 4. It's Vampire Cleric, it has Flying, and Ascend. If you control 10 or more permanents, then you have the Seed's Blessing. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the Seed's Blessing, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand, and then each opponent loses X life, and you gain that much life, where X is the card's mana value. I see what they're going for here. You're hoping to get something really bang, but at the same time, I'd rather have a Silverler or Enabler, so I'll put it here. Baleful Strix, okay. It's a, again, an artifact card. It's strange that you would put this, and that is not an artifact deck. It's a one, one that costs the mirror and it has flying death touch when it's just powerful. You get to draw a card. There are better draw effects in blue and in black. In general, doesn't really make sense as to why you'd have it here. Then we have Connive and Concoct. So on the left side, you gain control of target creature with power two or less. And on the right side, you surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Absolutely very, very good. And another way to reanimate so that's great oh lots of the multifarious one three shapeshifter cost to mirror when it's battlefield you get to say one and then for x it becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with mana value x except it's lots of so in case you do surveil something that you don't want to uh, well, you can't bring back in one way or another. The lines up and enables you to get back. So that's a very, very nice card. And we have Master of Death. It's a 3 1 zombie wizard. It costs 3 1 as his battlefield. Survey 2. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if it's in your graveyard, you may pay 1 life. And if you do, return it to hand. Another way to enable those wonderful, wonderful reanimates and surveils. Choked Estuary. That's one of the lands. It's nice to see the Dark Water Catacombs. Drawn your temple, which. Uh, you can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So just in case you surveil it, it's not a bad card, but you know what? Um, Fetid Pools, Hostile Desert, River of Tears. Okay. Um, I haven't seen these cards in a while. That's interesting. As usual, Sunken Hollow, they, they've improved a little bit on the overall mana base as a whole. I will say that, but they didn't 
you know, for me, it's gonna shine when they start putting the shock lines back in and all this kind of stuff. I know it's gonna drop the prices of certain cars, but let's be realistic. If you're providing this weaker mana base, it's best to, well, rate it at lower than I would use to. But the fact that they've started doing the sunken hollow type cards, you know, the check lines, that's pretty cool. And before they didn't even do that. Oh, Brainstorm. Okay, Brainstorm is in here. That's really, really good. Allows you to uh, draw three cards and then put the cards back on top on whatever way you want this is very nice consider okay that's very very nice i let you surveil one draw a card so i was wondering if you get more of these it's really really nice then you get curate another surveil two and draw cards very very good deep analysis okay target player draws two cards and you can flashback it i see what you're doing it because of the flashback and it's good to have a lot of flashback but not a good card unfortunately um then we have enhanced surveillance and enchantment cost two you may look at it at an additional two cards each time you surveil very strong in the stack and then exile it to shuffle your graveyard into your library so this could be a really really good card just in case you put some key parts and components into your deck and also the fact that it allows you to surveil an extra two that's insane in the deck then we have a pharaoh's dispersal it's an instant spell cost two generic class and three to cast a few targets on an attacking creature return target creature it's a bounce with surveil two i know what you're doing it the surveil two part is okay i'd rather have some removal now and also a bit more reanimate but i'll give you one of them why not mold drifter 2-2 two, two, that costs five is blue flying answers battlefield you draw two cards you can evoke it for three again i see why you're doing it but uh, for me it's just not synergistic enough um, to to count it as trying to do what it's oh night veil sprite is a one two that costs two it's flying whenever it attacks your veil one this one is a better one and it has flying so that's easier to for it to you know, attacking otherworldly gaze it's an instant surveil three plus only one and you can flash back it for two so this is more synergistic and i like the one better Spellbound Phantasm is a defender, 2-2 two, two, that costs 1, and whenever you surveil, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counters on it, and as long as it has 3 or more plus 1, plus 1 counters, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. A way to buff cards, and it synergizes with surveil. I really like it um, because it's so cheap. It's really, really cheap. It takes one plus one plus one to get it to attack and you can definitely build it up quite significantly in this kind of deck. Anime Dead, okay, great thing to see here. Really love the anime part. So Anime Dead, it's an aura. It costs two and a card in the graveyard. It's a creature card. And when it enters battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses an enchanted creature card in graveyard and gains an enchanted creature card onto the battlefield with Anime Dead. Basically, it just stays attached to the creature card. Return enchanted creature card onto the battlefield under control with enemy dead to it attached to it and when it leaves the battlefield my creature controller sacrifices so if enemy dead is removed in any way shape or form the creature gets sacrificed and goes back into your graveyard and the the creature gets minus one zero this is a classic it's a very old card i am happy 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 to see it in this kind of deck oh necromancy that is another great one so and sending shaman it costs three you may cast necromancy though it had flash if you cast it anytime a sorcery couldn't have been cast the controller of the permanent it becomes sacrificed it at the beginning of the next cleanup step and when it enters the battlefield if it's on the battlefield it becomes an aura with enchanted creature put onto the battlefield with necromancy and put target creature card from graveyard onto the battlefield basically it reanimates so long as you don't use it or flash it stays into play i really like this i am very happy with the reanimate side of this like usually it's not as strong this is amazingly good price of fame it's an instant it costs four costs two genetic elastic as if it targets a legendary creature you get to destroy target creature and surveil this i'll keep see i like this one more than the deep analysis for example or even the mold drifter and um yeah why not it's a removal that synergizes it does two things in this deck even three depending on what you're doing so that's great oh ravenous chupacabra Cost four is the two two one is battle to destroy target creature opponents controls. I'd rather have a removal rather this card and it's not seen the deck. Then we have Shriek Mom. It's a three two elemental. It costs five. It has fear when it's the battlefield. Destroy target are non artifact non black creature and evoke for two. And by the way, I am completely aware why they put these kind of cards in play because you're gonna reanimate them, especially with Merkel, and then you get more stuff out of the way. But the thing is, for these kind of costs, there are much better reanimate targets than why these creatures are here 
here. Now I understand that this is a precon, they can put every single great card in here, but still, I think these are cards that don't necessarily synergize too much and that I wouldn't keep necessarily in the deck, even though they are clear reanimate. And we have Sinister Starfish, poor little thing. Zero three Starfish that costs two, has tap to surveil one. It's a synergistic, but I'd rather not keep it. And we have Sir Conrad the Grim. Thanks for your turn for Eldrain. It's a five four human knight, and it costs five whenever another creature dies from it, or a creature card is put into graveyard from anywhere other than battlefield, so surveil as well. Or a creature card leaves your graveyard, so reanimate it. The deals one damage to each opponent and then for two each player mills a card so this is kind of an enabler to not really surveil but you mill and ping everybody for one i actually don't mind it in this deck and i see what it's trying to do so it's if you get better replace it of course but otherwise it's not a bad card whispering snitch is a one three vampire rogue that costs two whenever you surveil the first time each turn whispering snitch this will damage to each opponent and you get one life again another great card for this kind of thing because it's basically the um aristocrats deck but with a surveil twist i really like that and we have the mirror spy bag uh, spy bug it's a one one instead it caused the mirror flying menace and whenever you surveil you put a plus one plus one counters this is gonna be strong and grow up to be very very nasty and we have discovery and dispersal on the left side you have surveil to then draw a card and on the right side this is an instant each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest mana value among the permanents they control to its owner's hand then this card's a card and not so great compared to other cards and there are better this information campaign is an enchantment it costs three when it enters the battlefield you draw a card and each opponent discards a card and whenever you surveil return it to um its owner's hand allowing you to continuously play this it's not a bad card i um i'm a bit on the edge because there are better ways to draw a card but this allows you to also make your opponents discard so if you don't have any better keep it in it can be really nasty otherwise yeah it a notion rain as a sorcery costs three surveil two then draw two cards notion rain deals two damage to you why not i like this it's an enabler or sorry sorcery it, uh, this is better for me than some other cards then we have arcane signet the mirror signet the ever flowing chalice makes a return here you can kick it this is a weird deck they've added some cards that i'm wondering why like for example the ever flowing chalice and the um, baleful strix and for and metamorph are great in certain decks but not in this one necessarily so i'm wondering why they're here mind stone of course soul ring um talisman dominance thought vessel not necessary because you don't really draw a lot of cards then we have the ashen the paduka Commander Tower, we'll just go through the, the lands. If we see something that's interesting, again, Rally Query, you're not really drawing that many cards. Um, I mean, yes, you have Marvel. You have Marvel that draws you cards. Whenever you win a clash, you draw a card. But let's be honest, Marvel is not going to be in play every single game because it's part of the 100s in our analysis. So Rogue's Passage, I like that. I like that addition quite a lot. Oh, the Tainted Isle makes a return from Torment. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> um, Temple of False God, of course. And then we have a Grand Tool of Nine Islands and Nine Swamps. Okie dokie, so time to review this deck. Now, uh, it's an interesting deck. For the first time in uh, me reviewing these kind of reanimate pre-con decks, I am in awe at the amount of reanimate that you actually get. There are other spells that you can for sure put in the reanimate side that are even cheaper than the ones that you get here. But the fact that you get the necromancy, the animate dead, and reanimate in this deck, that is insanely good. So I'm really, really well pleased with that. There are quite a bit of surveil enablers and um, you know overall not a bad way to also utilize surveil in an intelligent way by buffing or by pinging your opponents in and of itself so yeah that's not bad and on top of that you have some okay targets to reanimate but i think this is the weakest part there are two weak parts to this deck first off the table interaction you don't have a lot of great kill or um, counter or control. The ones that are in here, they're fairly limited and there are better ones. And on top of that, if I'd rather just play more of the surveil control part, this is the best um, way I believe that you should play this deck because reanimate falls short. If you don't have a lot of small creatures that you're gonna be playing quite quickly uh, with Mirko, and I love Mirko. I will say, I think Mirko is really, really a fun little commander for reanimate, but because it's, well, the first 
turns until you build it up you're gonna be just looking for that surveil or controlling the board preventing your opponents from just smashing in you in the face because you're the reanimate so you're gonna be the arch enemy of the table most of the times then uh, if you don't have that kind of control at the beginning you're gonna be falling short and out of here i think there are nine cards that um that are creature cards that i'm just shaking my head wondering why you would put them in here there are better stuff that is not as expensive um and as usual you know there are the dragons from the Baldur's gate expansions there are so many good good reanimate cards even with the uh, funny enough some of the cards from the sauron deck from the lord of the rings precon that one has some pretty decent targets so here is the flip on that um you don't have so much control you don't have so many great targets to to reanimate but you have the other side so because of that i think the deck has quite got quite a lot of potential and i really want to give it a higher score because of the, Im the implementation of some really good cards i mean you have brainstorm you have um you, you don't have you know the the delve cards but you have consider curate you have reanimates you have so many many good cards that really want makes me want to give a good score but at the same time i need to look this objectively and say does the deck do straight out of the box what it's meant to do in a way it does i think the deck is worthy of a seven point Oh, so a seven, a straight seven for this deck is what I give it. I think compared to the blame game, which I bumped up by a half a score because of the idea of the goading and how unique that was, but realistically that was a six. This definitely has a lot more going for it. And what you're going to be wanting to do is replace the targets of the reanimate, put a little bit more control, and you don't even have to do that much to be able to make this deck strong. Of course, as usual, the lands are a bit more lacking, but with the fact that you're playing two colors in the decks i can give it a little bit more of a break than i would with you know uh, commander masters <laughs> kind of deck and um, in the end the, the lands are not that awful but they're just meh we all know that so that's it i think the those are our thoughts for this deck for scotty and i um if you don't agree or if you have any ideas so please let us know in the comments down below if we missed anything as we read and reply to every one of them and if you like this video make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as it does help small channels like us a lot and it, we will be unboxing the remainder of the murderous a carnival of manor commander deck so we hope to see you in the next video until the next one be good be kind have a good day and we'll see you next time bye